We're standing on the edge of potential. The greatest potential of any change that we want to make as individuals, as communities. So how's it gonna look? Whoever came up with the recycling propaganda, I want to talk to them because that is awesome propaganda. One of the missions at Ecology Action was to keep things out of the waste stream, right? Reuse more than, first is to reduce, right? We reduce everything. Stop using it. We don't need to use it. Then re reuse what you can. Stop throwing everything away. And then recycle it if you've got no other choice. It's an environmental organization, but it does work. It does recycle. In 2000, the, the workers decided to fire the boss because they didn't like it that the person, the executive director was making $45,000 a year, while in 2000 they were making $7 an hour to actually do the physical work. So they went on strike and they said, we're gonna fire the boss. So they started their path to become a worker cooperative, a horizontal worker cooperative where each person's voice had equal say and equal responsibility in making decisions. And um, I was brought in in 2006 uh, from my experience of building grassroots organizations, just like a common ground collective. And so um, I was brought in to help horizontalize the organization, raising the wage, or some people had to lower their wage. And so we were stopping from being a traditional nonprofit in the fundraising sense also, where the funders could tell us what to do. We wanted to make our own money. We were also trying to create uh, experimental models that we could um, use in other parts of our communities to help other, build other worker cooperatives with power sharing, built on anti-oppression, built on common principles and values and consensus decision makings. And so as, as part of that, we were also taking in good usable materials like furniture and lighting and you know, like just household goods that we could, we could do things with. And we were like, well, why don't we just start a thrift store? We got together to talk about building a thrift store, and the thrift store would keep waste out of the out of the waste stream. It would redistribute material aid to local organizations, and because things are coming in, a group needs T-shirts. All right, well we'll get T-shirts for you. Bicycles come in, so Yellow Bike is another project that's going on, another horizontally organized project. They need bikes. We'll get bikes. We'll funnel bikes to them. But also to create an economic engine that would fund projects that nobody else would fund. So like in Austin, there's the Inside Books Project, which is a free books to prisoners project for Texas prisoners. Well, nobody wants to fund that. Except for begging for money, who's going to fund that? And no professional organization is going to fund that. So what if Ecology Action and Treasure City become funding agents for that so they don't have to worry about money? So that's what happened. I worked with Inside Book Project for years, and I was one of the fundraisers for many of those years. And I got tired of just like throwing benefits and putting all these hours in for a little bit of money or asking for donations so that we could have this event to make some money to send these books and then asking the people who work at the project all the time to also fund the project. It just didn't seem right. So I wanted to find an alternative way to fund the project. And so Treasure City was that, was that way. Uh, these are the different organizations that we support. Actually, um, she is with Son Armado, and they play here. We have been successful in supporting these organizations. Um, Inside Books being the main beneficiary where we gave them over $20,000 last year. We gave them more than 60% of their budget, and this was the first time this year was the first year that they had enough money to send out all the packages that they have done. We can give Food Not Bombs all the bowls and cups that they'll need in their existence. You know, we can give um, <clears throat> Political Prisoner Writing Night all the envelopes and stationery that one could ever think of, you know. We've also done things like for 
there's a big pipeline coming down from Canada to here. Um, and so there's been a lot of actions against that pipeline. So when it was Texas was doing the fight, we supported that action and gave them different things that they need. And then we uh, raised money. Many other thrift stores, the large chain thrift stores, their money goes to Christian-based organizations. So they're not going to fund the kind of organizations that we want to fund. So that's what's different about us, is that it is specific to our community and specific to our area. We're not trying to save people in other countries. We're just trying to save ourselves, you know, in our community. don't have bosses so we we have um, an even tiered structure so everyone gets paid the same no matter how long you've been there or what your skill set is and then we also skill share so we all take turns in learning those different skill sets from each other a lot of times when you work for these other large corporations then you're you're just there to do what they say that you can do and there's this idea that workers can't govern themselves but in reality bosses need workers workers don't need bosses hey sarah can i do these books yeah where are they going they're gonna go to inside books project oh great oppositional politics worked really good for a long time in this country because so many things were so overtly bad racism and sexism and um you know even going back further like slavery um, but but in the last 20 or 30 or 40 years, it hasn't worked so well. And what's happened on, the, on largely on the left is we've become stuck in only doing oppositional politics things without thinking about building for greater futures for all of us. And 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 so instead of getting into the streets all the time or fighting state oppression or fighting corporate power, what does it look like to build things that are part of political movements? How do we build for futures, and how do we make cooperatives, worker cooperatives specifically, um, part of that? Um, how do we create jobs with dignity for ourselves? Uh, how do we create um, uh, economic engines that might um, fund things that we always have problems funding, like cultural projects, healthcare, education, on, on small scales, in our local communities? And then the idea began to emerge in, in 2006 of building um, a, a network of cooperatives in, in, in our local bioregion within our city um, that would all work together um, to fund projects that nobody else would fund to build healthcare, to build these cultural programs and stuff. And the work that we do comes out of the anarchist tradition of cooperation, of self-determination, of direct action, of these things that we can do ourselves to work together, that we don't need to rely on others to make these things happen. We just need to do it. So when I talk about worker cooperatives, I am only talking about horizontally organized local worker cooperatives. I think this is a really important distinction that worker cooperatives are the answer, they're just part of the answer. We need dual power, which was the idea of resisting on one hand and building on the other hand. Resisting, which is the thing that we do in political leftist movements really well, but trying to create long-term sustainable things. Taking these ideas of building cooperatives, building uh, community gardens, building these things, food security, all of these things together. A worker cooperative is only one damn component in this. And. Um, the rise of anarchism as, a, as the main sphere of influence of political organizing is really immature in the United States. Well, because, because a mix of the political immaturity and the dominant idea about, uh, of anti-capitalist is confused to don't start any businesses because that's, you're a capitalist if you start that automatically. Which is a contradictory uh, thing because these people who are doing that still working at, at shitty jobs, they're still um, uh, wage slaves for somebody else or they're, they're living off the system, right? Um, but, but what they tell themselves is that they're anti-capitalist. So how do we, how do we get more maturity in that idea of saying that you're anti-capitalist, but you recognize that we live in a capitalist system and this is the part you're trying to carve out until it either withers or until we help topple it. And would you like a bag? 
Uh, yes, please. Okay, thanks a lot. Have Merci a great day. beaucoup. Bye. The legacy of, of cooperatives is not seen um, as radical anymore. I would actually say that the, the cooperative movement in general is a failure because really all it did was create a bubble within the capitalist system to, as an alternative. In the, and, 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 and most worker, and even worker cooperatives fall into the same pit. And so the idea is if we build horizontal worker cooperatives, that we don't just create jobs in and of themselves that do these things, that they must be part of this larger thing, um, and not just building other worker cooperatives, but part of localized currencies, barter systems, whatever those can be as we're in these transitional economies. Yeah, I guess a comparison could be like uh, the Mondragon model in, in Spain, but uh, not the imperative growth model that they have, where they're trying to compete in the capitalist system, but in, a, in an opposite way, where it's, in, where it's localized economies and on steroids. And it's hard to maintain people's interest in doing this uh, because it's long, arduous, dirty work, right? It's not nearly as sexy as um, facing off with the cops uh, in the streets or tasting tear gas. And I'll say that from experience. Like, I, I, I love doing that stuff. And who wants to sit in meetings, you know? But it's important work that needs to happen because we have no retention in our movements where people leave our movements. After their 20s, a lot of people leave our political movements to work for a professional nonprofit, or they work for the state, or they go work for corporations. And so we lose people. Our movements largely don't accept families in them, in very rare instances. Um, and we're not set up to deal with elderly people. We're not set up to deal with a lot of things. And so in the political movements I want to see, I want to be a part of this in building communities. And how do we keep people in so we can take care of each other and pass on information and build these long-term projects? Well, it wasn't to work in retail and play with clothes all day. That is for sure. That is nothing that has ever been an interest to me. Is I've never been known as like the most fashionable person in the world or anything like that. But my motivation always was to fund Inside Books and to help build this mutual aid network, you know, where, I mean, my dream is that Treasure City will be even more successful and then we'll be able to seed other businesses that will work within our own network. Like we have big dreams of all these different businesses that people can do and where we all work together on it. So, I mean, it's part of, this is one step to this other economy. <laughs> We interfaced with thousands of people who had never heard of the ideas of cooperatives, uh, worker cooperatives, anarchism, and so environmentalism and recycling became the way that we, we were able to tell these stories and talk to people and show by doing. Treasure City is an easy way to integrate those all those folks. So like they're like an anarchist, like many people think that anarchists are just troublemakers and they just want to blow stuff up and that's absolutely not the truth. So this is a way for people to come in and be like, oh, they're not blowing things up and <laughs> things are fine in here. And so they might go to the anarchist city group or maybe they think that everybody in prison are horrible people and that there's never been a mistake of someone in prison or someone's in prison because the government wants them to. Well, they come to Treasure City and they read all about these political prisoners or they come to a letter writing night or they go to Inside Book Project and they realize you know, the nature of the prison industrial complex. <laughs> Can't expect people just to walk away with the unsustainable economy we have right now. Like, you can't expect people who have a lot just to go, okay, you're right, that's not fair, that's not gonna happen. And the average person doesn't have time I mean, between just making it in the world and their life to, like, figure out a different way of getting water or, like, some of the things that we all need every day. So the idea is if these structures are here, then it'll be easy just to step over, you know, instead of shopping at the large corporate places, if these other places are in 
already going, then they can just step over to those. You know, instead of having to go to banks for traditional lending, if there's a mutual aid network where we have our own economy and we're taking care of each other, then you can just easily step over. Horizontal worker cooperatives, I, I, I believe, is part of a transition from this um, international globalization that has really taken root in the last 30 years uh, back to localized economies which are very sustainable in so many more ways. Because if you live in a community and you work in that community, you're going to be much more accountable to the people around you and know what is available to use or not use than you, than you are if you live 3,000 miles away from it, 10,000 miles away from it. You're going to have much more social pressure from people on one end, but much more responsibility on the other end. So in, in my idea of what I call anarchy is um, that we must localize everything. We must do this from the grassroots up. We must build this from the bottom. Like I'm imagining that these cooperative, that a worker cooperative network um, is, um, there's not just one, that there's multiple and they overlap each other. They're like webs that are kind of crisscrossed with each other and they have different tangential ties to each other, but that, that you localize them as, as much as you can. How do we not just become an alternative in the capitalist system? How do we actually build something that is ours or, you know, ours not like a few people, but ours, not the capitalist system within that? And I don't have the answer to that. It's not one, two, three steps to revolution. But these are steps along the way towards that. So what we are proposing is that we take these steps that we don't know what the answers will be, but we begin to build healthy communities that are sustainable, ecologically, built on localized economies or non-economies, that are about rewilding spaces, that are about really radically thinking differently about who we are and how we engage with each other as we get through life.